representatives, please. How do each of you view the other uh, selected companies? Who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I'll just say, you know, we're very excited. Uh, I'm a true believer in, in competition and competition of new ideas. And I think that's what's so great about this segment of the market, whether it's the satellite companies that are building these new small sats and CubeSats or the, the launch providers. Uh, you're seeing companies that are coming out to solve problems in very different ways. And I, I think that that's healthy. Um, personally, I actually applaud it every time I see uh, a launch with uh, these small sats being deployed. Sometimes I'm asked to review them as competition, and I actually just view that as great opportunities to see the market grow. Because I think as these satellites get demonstrated in orbit, I think the demand will grow for them. Yeah, and, and I, I, I totally agree. I mean, um, a bit of healthy competition is great, but there is also um, rocket karma. And you, you never put down any other rocket company because <laughs> it, is, it is a really hard thing to do. So, um, you know, competition's great and, and we, we look forward to competing. And I would echo the same. Uh, I, I think the competition is fantastic. And with the growth that we're seeing in the market, I think you're going to see um, you know, a lot of different companies that are going to be competing for this space as well. And uh, the market will continue to grow and we'll see more competition. Thank you. Our next, James. Thanks to uh, James Dean Florida today and uh, maybe for, for Mark again. Um, in terms of the competitive aspect here, you've selected these companies. Is there any further competition remaining about you know who flies first or who gets to fly which payloads or are they all interchangeable you know on each vehicle or um, is it you know already set who's flying what and when? We haven't manifested certain payloads onto certain vehicles yet, um, so there is competition inherent kind of in the process. Um, we don't want them all to rush. We gave them that requirement to launch by April 2018, and we want them to drive that schedule based on their own cadence. Um, I know Garrett's suite of payloads will, will be matched to the specific orbits that the vehicles will go to, but no specific follow-on that we have set in the schedule right as of now. Yeah, and as for Virgin Galactic, I think it is important to see that the government is participating uh, and participating in a way that sort of reflects the class of payloads that are being flown. Um, sometimes you can turn an inexpensive launch vehicle into a very expensive one if you levy too many requirements on it. I think NASA's taken about the right touch on this and looking to get these payloads access to space while for the best price and for the best value uh, available. I'd also add that it's nice working with NASA because NASA brings a tremendous amount of technical expertise the Launch Services Program has a fantastic record of success. So I think working with NASA will also help just improving the, the quality of the launches and the services that we provide. So appreciate the question. Again, you got it right. We're definitely going after a, a high risk approach here. So the CubeSats represent that high risk tolerant payload, which are perfect for a demonstration of a first flight. So from the Launch Service Program's perspective, again, we're along for the ride with our, our low risk tolerant, high value spacecraft. This time we're trying to step back a little bit and make sure the government gets out of the way, doesn't inhibit the, the commercial solutions these companies are trying to bring forward, but we're gonna definitely get insight so that when we do go forward and try to procure a launch service for a, a low risk tolerant spacecraft, we're one step ahead of the game with trying to certify them to, to make sure they can get a safe access to space. All right, any other questions here in the room? You mentioned this is a competition. Daryl Mayo, Fox 35 in Orlando. You mentioned this is a competition. Is there a second round to this? And does that come with a level of funding? And, and do you narrow down the field that we see here? So, so the way we set it up was to go out and buy a commercial launch service. So it was simply one round. We've got milestones in our contract that help us walk these providers through the design process, a test program, and then the final launch integration. So we don't have an option in there to go buy additional flights. But by allowing them to compete in this demonstration flight phase, it kind of opens the door for us to look at their maturity and then have them out there as an available option for the science community as they grow into potentially looking at using this class of launch services. And for the 